hi everyone welcome back to my channel and welcome to today's video i am just out of the shower and i am about to get dressed but i want to take you with me over the next few days to show you the next phase of metabolic recovery so up to now what i've been working on is increasing my carbs fats and proteins and calories from 11 1200 up to i'm around about 16 to 18 now um and that will that won't increase much more until i start this next phase which is to build my new lean muscle which i haven't been able to do up to now because i haven't been eating enough carbs which means i haven't been able to build enough muscle um so this is the next phase my weight has been fairly stable like i've up and down a few pounds but the net gain is around about four pounds, which for me is it's not a big deal because it's it's called a health gain, <laughs> which is like counterintuitive. But this health gain has been my, as part of my metabolic recovery because my body has been trained to exist on so little up to now that when you increase it, it's gonna gain some weight anyway, just to kind of have more savings there, just in case I decide to go back to crazy amounts again. And obviously I'm not gonna do that. So once my body feels safe, that these level of calories and nutrition are gonna continue, and I start to build that lean muscle, then it's gonna come down again. And I'm really excited. So my goal is to lose 15 kilos, which is around about 30, let me let me google it so that i have it exactly right but you know try and embrace the metric system it's so much easier uh, so 15 kilograms is what i'm looking to lose and in pounds that's 33.0690 pounds so yeah around about 30 pounds let's say 15 kilos around about 30 pounds and the way i'm doing that is by lifting weights three days a week i'm going to be doing a weight lifting program which is going to start off just with me, my body weight, no actual weights because my strength is that bad. My lean muscle mass is that low that I, I sometimes have problems with like getting up off the floor. Like I have to use like my hands and pull myself up because my leg muscles aren't strong enough. So that catabolism, that breaking down of lean muscle mass happens when you're in, um, in ketosis for as long as I was, which is like five years. So, uh, well, like four and a half years um so i'm going to start off uh with just taking you along to as i said so today's my first day doing the exercises um i'm going to talk you through them i'm not going to show you like every exercise i'm doing because that's boring to watch but i'm going to tell you exactly what i'm go going to be doing it's basically like upper body lower body and then whole body and it's like super simple and three days a week so one day is upper body the next day is lower body and then the third day is full body and that's it like just three days a week but then i need to do incidental exercise every other day right and if you do like super hard cardio on the days that you're not lifting it can really harm your recovery and your recovery is where you lose the fat not in the gym it's during the recovery period right is when the lean muscle builds and the fat reduces so in order to make sure that i'm getting my proper recovery um, I'm going to be doing incidental exercise, which is literally just walking 8,000 steps a day, not like super pumped, not getting my heart rate up into the like 150s, just keeping it easy and low and not low, low, but you know, getting out and having a walk. Um, like I'm standing right now, I have a standing desk, which I am going to use more so i'm going to put on timers so that i stand for 20 minutes of every hour and while i'm standing i'll have music on i'll be able to like kind of you know step around and and dance around a bit um i'm going to be checking my blood glucose i have a continuous glucose monitor on me this is glucose monitor number five four yeah no number four right so this is week nine of my continuous glucose monitor um, and I, uh, I'm going to use my lumen to make sure that I am in fat burning when I'm relaxed and that I'm burning carbs and fats the rest of the time. 
and that again you need to be burning fat when you have downtime that's the way to lose weight not in the gym where in the gym you build muscle that's where you do that's where you do the work to to build the muscle because when you go to the gym and you work out and you work to muscle failure which is what i'm going to be doing you break down your muscle fibers and then during the rest periods you build new muscle fiber which is super insulin sensitive really really good uh um, burning body fat and that's when you want the fat burning during those times of rest so I'm going to get myself dressed I'm going to start off I'm going to put on um, some face cream um, and one of the things that that people have noticed actually in the last video that I made uh, you can just go back and, and have a look at it I'm not going to um, I'm not going to uh, tag it here but during the the, la the last video that I made people were saying I cannot believe how different you look how how good you look how shiny you look like not not like literally like shiny but like how healthy you look and you know what i feel so much better i'm sleeping so much better i'm warm all the time i have no symptoms of um metabolic adaptation the negative metabolic adaptation now that doesn't mean that i can start eating 2500 calories a day because i did i did experiment a little bit with eating around about 2000 and that's where i consistently gained like half a kilo a day like so over four days like i i gained like two kilos which is about four pounds and that has been slow to come off so I have found my Goldilocks zone, which again, you have to do this work for yourself to find out where that Goldilocks zone is. It's around about six, 1,600 to 1,800 calories a day. Um, and now I'm excited for the next part. I never thought I'd be excited about exercise, but here we are. Uh, so one of the incidental exercises that I'm going to be doing, like I said, is walking, but also I've been practicing on my roller skates. So I'm going to make sure that every single day that I get for at least 10 to 15 minutes on my roller skates um, to like to practice, to learn my balance, but also to get that just uh, incidental exercise from having fun. And then I've decided that I'm going to do a quick um, yin yoga session before bed every night, 10, 15 minute yoga session just to stretch out. And that's it. Like that's it. Like I'm literally, I'm not doing heavy cardio. I'm um, I'm concentrating on weights, concentrating on body composition, and um, basically getting a lot of fat burning from um, from the incidental, like literally from the incidental exercise of like eight thousand steps a day. So I'm gonna go dry my hair. I'm putting in heat protective spray. Um, because I need to blow dry it because otherwise it will end up crazy and then I've got which is a really nice it's a, a sea salt spray which gives nice um, volume which I need because my hair is naturally thin like I'm a northern European a very very white northern European so we tend to have thin hair so I'm gonna go blow dry that and then we are going to go to the supermarket actually because we need some food for dinner today because it's a it's actually a bank holiday here in france um we have today off it's monday we have today off and then we are going to go for a walk in the city i think and then i'll be back to do my first exercise I learned from doing these exercises I am really really not as fit as I had led myself to believe so these are my macros for today 106 grams of protein 73 grams of carbs and 60 grams of fat and it says that I've been burning carbs practically all day and that's because yesterday was Easter and I had a lot of chocolate yesterday um, so like my carbs yesterday, I think if I have a look, uh, nutrition, 
yesterday like my carbs were super high yesterday like 155 grams like really really high um so that means that today i was burning mostly carbs and because i did the leg exercises today the muscle exercises plus i went out walking i didn't quite get my steps in let me see 6,700 almost 7,000 but tomorrow I'm gonna make it up because again you know it doesn't have to be perfect so carbs are okay today 73 I'm happy with that protein could be slightly higher but you know what it'll be fine tomorrow I'm going to make sure that my carbohydrates are the same protein is a little bit higher fat a little bit lower and um, get back into fat and carb burning The minute I switch on the camera, all these cars start to go by. We are just about to leave to go to the cinema at where, for the first time in six years, I can actually have guilt-free popcorn. <laughs> but I need to prepare for that guilt-free popcorn. I'm just trying to... Um, so I've still got my continuous glucose monitor on, so I'm going to check this. I'm going to scan. So it's at 4.4, so like that's fasted. I haven't eaten in like three hours, so that's that's fasted blood glucose. You can see lunch and then a walk. <laughs> it went, ooh, ooh, ooh. but there's no big spikes. Like you can see there, there's no big spikes. So what I'm going to do is with my glucose management, I am going to bring a couple of baby bell cheese. And when we get to the cinema, I'm gonna order a medium popcorn, I'm gonna order a sparkling water, and then I'm gonna have my two baby bell before I have the popcorn, so it will help reduce the impact of the glucose on, on my glucose it's still gonna go up like probably quite high um but i'll track it and show you um but the important thing is that although it might go quite high it's not gonna go over um like it's not gonna go crazy it's not gonna go like 11 or 12 or anything like that um but it won't stay up and more importantly it's not gonna cause any cravings because um i'm going to be eating balanced carbs fats proteins afterwards as well so i'm going to take it along um, and you can see exactly what i'm going to be eating for a protein priority diet okay so this is the popcorn um you can see that it's uh, the average is still okay for the moment so i'm going to check it again let's scan it again okay so it's 5.3 so it's coming back down you can see it's gone up and it's coming back down so now what i'm going to do is i'm going to go for a walk to get it down a little bit further and get my steps up for the day So you can see my blood glucose has gone, come back down. I mean, it says it's red and it's going low, but it's fine. It's not, I don't feel it. Um, you can see that at six, it started to go up and then seven, eight, it was kind of back below six, um, which is fine because two hours after eating, it should be below seven. And it definitely was because seven is like, up here. You can see three, six, nine there. And now it's back to baseline.
So it's Saturday morning and we are heading out because we have a lot to do today. Um, we're going to go see actually thinking about buying a new car. We're thinking about converting from, we have one petrol, one diesel, and we're thinking about converting to uh, electric. So we're going to go have a look at the, it's a Ford, I can't remember the name of it, but I'm going to make myself a collagen coffee and this, I just want to talk about the collagen that I use. So there are two collagen products that I normally use. There's the Perfect Keto Unflavored Keto Collagen. I used to have the flavored one, but I, now I've switched to unflavored. And this Revive Naturals. So this is great for anybody in the United States. It's pricey for anybody in Europe. And this is great for anybody in Europe. Um, and it comes in these really handy sachets. So like when I'm going into the city to work, like I throw a couple of them into my bag to have with my coffee. So I've got my travel mug here that I'm gonna make my collagen coffee in. So I'm going to use uh, one of the Revive Naturals protein uh, collagen um, sticks. Again, this is unflavored as well. I don't know if you can see. Let me see if I can get it to focus. It's unflavored. So I'm gonna add that and make myself a coffee and we're gonna get going on today's chores. <laughs> into the supermarket and when we left <laughs> it was not raining and we've just gotten soaked like completely soaked so i got myself a rotisserie chicken ready cooked rotisserie chicken and i got myself a little quiche a little, a little uh, cheese quiche and i'll be having that with obligatory salad <sighs> feel a bit wet <laughs> i was just saying that we got wet yeah, it was like the sun. Yeah, the sun. It's like being back in Ireland. Like you, you know, you go go away for ten minutes, and all of a sudden it's lashing rain. So we're gonna grab lunch. I'll show you what we what we're gonna have. So this is what I'm gonna have for my lunch now. I'm gonna have these, not all of them, but the little mozzarella balls. Uh, these come directly from Italy, and I'm going to have some tomatoes with them. These are are ones that are grown in the south of France. It says it there. Um, no pesticide residue and then we got two of these little mini quiche fromage so a little uh it's cheese it's just cheese um and the ingredients are really good they're like what you'd use at home there's no seed oils or anything in it and we're gonna have that with the rotisserie chicken that we bought um i'm going to have these with balsamic vinegar olive oil and some basil we have a fresh basil plant that's growing here it's inside because it's too cold out at the moment so i'll show you when it's ready to eat So we've just we've just been out to Intersport and I got the bar for doing the Romanian deadlifts and I also got I got four two kilo weights and I got two five kilos there's one there there's one over there and actually this bar <laughs> is what did what did he say it was doesn't say what it is but it, like it feels like it could be easily 10 kilos um so this is going to be enough by itself without the weight on it um but also to go along with my 
roller skates right so I've showed these before um I bought we we actually both bought a pair of like proper roller blades for going out to skate by the lake Okay, editing Christina had to explain that these mushrooms are left over. This is not like a normal portion size, just in case you're worried. told me two, two, even three months ago that I'd have gained three kilo, around about six pounds, I would have freaked out, but I am, oh, I'm so happy about it. And I know that sounds really weird, but I feel amazing. I, I have never, even when I did carnivore and I was trying to explain how carnivore feels when you first go on it, it is nothing like this. I feel strong. I feel vital. My mood is great. My energy is amazing. Um, I'm happy all the time. There's like, there's room in my brain for stuff that isn't to do with food. And it's just, it's the most amazing, happy, liberating experience of my entire life. And I'm so happy to share it with you. I'm, sh I'm so happy that I get to talk through the process and I'm, I'm so happy that I get to document it because when I started keto back in 2016, it was a full on year before I picked up the camera and started to share my journey. And this time I'm able to I'm able to bring you along with me. Like if you go back and have a look at the video I did where I discovered what the problem was about doing keto long term and the effect that it had on my body personally um, and I'll link it up here. I had been trying so many ways to fix what I thought the problem was and you know it's really funny that I get feedback now it's like oh my god you're such a victim like you're always blaming somebody else it's like well I don't know these things inherently so I have to learn them and when the people I'm learning them from are not giving you the whole information, how is that my fault? Secondly, people were saying, oh, she has such an unhealthy relationship with food. Damn right I did. I was afraid of eating carbs. Oh my God, it's so tragic that for so long I was just wrapped up in this food and carbs and avoiding all of these things. And it was so unhealthy. So many people have come to me and said, Christina, I am afraid of eating carbs. I'm afraid to eat an apple. I'm afraid to eat an orange. And it's like, be afraid of eating the donuts and the ice cream and all the crap. Be afraid of that. But don't be afraid of whole food. Don't be afraid of apples and oranges. Like, you're not going to eat 20 kg of oranges. And it's that toxic diet mentality. That's where it got us. So all of these people are using it to disparage me, to say, oh, you're a victim and, and you're always blaming somebody else and you you have such an unhealthy relationship with food. Uh-huh. And I can guarantee that a lot of people watching this are also like, yeah, I have a pretty unhealthy relationship with food. I'm terrified of carbs, especially if you've come from the keto community, you can be terrified of eating carbs. Um, so there was also this like, she, she ha is, going to delete anybody who disagrees with her. That's not what I said. What I said was, if you're gonna troll, I'm gonna delete you. But I want to have a debate. I want to have discussion. I want us to investigate this. 
and I've done it myself like I've I've done it with the people who have come into the the protein priority diet and who have started a metabolic recovery plan they're eating more carbs they're eating more food and they're losing weight and it's like we need to get to all of the people who are just trying their best and not getting anywhere because they're doing it the way that I was teaching it even a couple of years ago and as part of my um my kind of giving back and, and apologizing for that and I know that I'm, I'm always only um teaching what I was taught then I know that it's like I, I'm blaming myself for perpetuating the the message but the important thing is that I'm standing up and saying hey this might not be right um I'm not using studies where I cite my own studies or I'm not citing studies where I've paid for it I'm not citing studies where um the, the they've been done on 12 healthy men for six weeks doing low carb diets for six weeks I'm not doing any of that what I'm saying is anecdotally what I'm seeing in my program what I'm seeing in my private practice what I'm seeing in myself is this amazing transformation and you can probably tell my energy is sky high and I might seem like a little bit like <laughs> is she like on um a bit of a manic uh, energy um <laughs> cycle like I might come across like I'm totally out of it but I'm just like I've never been this happy honestly even when I got to my goal weight also I got my goal was around 70 kilos right it was 65 was my ideal body weight but honestly when I got to 70 kilos it was perfect it's where I wanted to stay and I stayed there for like a hot minute but when I was at 70 kilos I was barely eating anything I was eating practically zero carb I was fasting a lot I was cold all the time my hair was falling out my thyroid wasn't working I was miserable and here I am um 13 kilos so about 26 I'm, 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 I'm going to do the maths because I really want this to be accurate um, so I am um, so what <laughs> so it's 13 oh my goodness uh, so actually 28 28 pounds heavier and I am a million times happier and I never thought that that would happen I really never thought that would happen but here's the thing um, I feel amazing I have been one week doing the um, doing my exercise plan right so I've stopped weighing myself so the last time I weighed myself was 83 kilos right so that that's where I know I was um, and I've stopped weighing I'm gonna not, I'm not gonna weigh myself for an entire month um because i want to concentrate on how i feel what i'm eating and the movement that i'm doing i am moving more now like in the last nine weeks so i'm nine weeks doing the metabolic recovery plan and over those nine weeks like i cannot i cannot put into words i cannot stress how transformative it's been all of my symptoms have gone away um, my hair has stopped falling out. Um, I have been sleeping like a baby. And the most important thing is that I feel happier. I'm warm all the time, which is a complete change. Like my hands are warm. Like I have no makeup on. I'm like, I'm not wearing any makeup at all. My skin is really clear. The only makeup I have on is a little bit of eyeshadow and mascara. That is it. Like I literally have no makeup on. Um, and my skin feels me I've lost that kind of gray pallor uh, I have rosy cheeks like it might not look on camera like I, I, I can't tell but it may not look on like, on camera but I have rosy cheeks because I'm in front of really bright studio lights um, you can see how bright they are the reflection in, in my phone like you can see that see the bright light there <laughs> and then there's another one over there so yeah the the lights are really bright um, the energy I need to talk about the energy because I I used to be a member of the gym and when we locked down I I stopped going obviously um but it was kind of a relief because it was an actual battle every time I was going to go to the gym and I was working out fasted and when I think now of what working out fasted would have done to my body um 
I had no energy, I had no enthusiasm. Now I'm, I am aiming for 8,000 steps a day minimum. Now remember, this is going from like 2,000, right? So I, if you're somebody who regularly does 15, 20K steps a day, then, you know, I, I know it, it doesn't seem like a lot, but when you're going from where I was with zero energy and zero enthusiasm, being able to get to 8,000 steps a day is incredible. And I haven't done it every single day because I'm not pushing myself. This is the thing, I am not using this as a punishment. This is, yeah, let's get moving. Yesterday, the weather was really, really bad here. So I did about three and a half thousand steps, but I also did 30 minutes on the stationary bike. And I said, you know what? I'm gonna watch uh, a vlog of, um, so I watch on YouTube, had a vlog out and it was 30 minutes. And I was like, that's perfect. I'm gonna sit on the stationary bike and I'm gonna put on the vlog. And I was waiting for the muscle ache. I was waiting for the tiredness, the fatigue in my muscles. The vlog ended and I could have gone for another half an hour and it was nice. And one of the, the keys of the exercise plan that I'm on is that on my rest days, which yesterday was a rest day, that I keep my heart rate um, below 150 so that I don't get into that stress, body stress um, zone. So my heart rate only got up to about 110. So it was a nice leisurely um, bike ride. And I didn't even notice it gone by. I didn't get any muscle fatigue. I didn't get any muscle ache, that kind of lactic acid burn. I didn't get any of that. And it was like, oh God. Like I actually feel really emotional talking about it because my health and how I feel in my body has just exploded with positivity. And that's what I'm saying. Like. You could tell me that I had I had gained like five kilos, 10 kilos, and you know what? I probably wouldn't care because I know now that this is the healing phase. This is the recovery phase. And that, that weight gain is not a negative weight gain. It's a positive, it's a healing weight gain. And the majority of people who decide that they're going to do metabolic recovery are going to gain a little weight because I've gone from 11, 1200 calories a day to 1800 calories a day over eight weeks. Slowly is the way to do it. I'm eating about 100 to 120 grams of carbs a day. Um, I'm still eating protein priority, obviously. And so I'm eating um, high protein, moderate carb, moderate fat. And I just feel incredible. Like I feel like a 20 year old. Like it's unbelievable how good I feel. I have complete, like I, I eat only whole food. Like I don't eat any processed food. Um, I'm, I am diligently reading labels, making sure that I'm getting no seed oils. Um, I'm eating fruit. I am eating some vegetables. So um, I'm being really careful not to have too many nightshades. Like, so not a lot of potato, not a lot of tomato. I'm having them occasionally, a couple of times a week. Um, butternut squash. Uh, but the most amazing thing is that all of a sudden the doors have been thrown open and when I walk into the supermarket, I'm still going down the periphery. Like I'm not going into the middle aisle where all the crap is, but I can have a slice of sourdough toast in the morning and it doesn't spike my blood glucose crazy. I don't get any of the issues that I used to have with grains. Like I don't get sore knees anymore. I don't have any problems with my digestion. And that's another thing. My digestion has completely transformed over the last eight weeks, like completely transformed. So gaining those few pounds, those few kilos, what about it? Like, what about it? I know that with starting with the um, the slight calorie reduction, right? So you don't need to be eating 11, 1200 calories a day. You only need a very slight couple of hundred calories deficit if you are combining it with weight training, which I started last week. And let me tell you, last week, I started on Monday and Monday evening, Tuesday and Wednesday, like I could barely walk. Um, I started doing um, Romanian deadlift split squats. 
which is basically where you put one foot up behind you and then you do a squat with weighted dumbbells. I can't do it with the dumbbells yet. And I can't do the, the squats, like the normal squats. You're supposed to do them with, start off with like a kilo or 500 gram dumbbells. I'm not there yet. I am just barely lifting my own body weight. Um, I'm not able to do all of the sets, but you know what? I'm working up and every time I do it, I'm getting better and better. And I'm able to lift heavier and heavier. Um, I'm now I'm now doing um, 5K lifts. And last Saturday over the weekend, I went and I got um, new barbells and new dumbbells so that I can have the extra weight so I can start to build it up. And let me tell you, I love lifting. Ah, oh, I love it because I love I love doing activities where I see a, um, an improvement every single time I do it. And for such a long time, like I was chasing cardio, like I was, I wanted to be able to go for longer. And, and now I know that yeah, cardio is fine for like your cardiovascular health and um, burning carbs. If you eat too many carbs, you go for a brisk walk and like you burn the carbs that you've eaten and you burn the carbs that you've stored and then you replace them at your next meal. So, car but cardio is great for health and great for bone, um, bone health and um, muscular health and um, insulin sensitivity and all of those great things and it's great for mood and getting your gut working and getting your lymphatic system moving but for weight loss you gotta be lifting the weights so I'm only a week into it um, and I've already lost like 800 grams which is um, might not seem like a lot if you've if you're not um, no it's not 800 it's 0.8 <laughs> because that would be it's like 1.7 pounds almost 1.8 pounds um in a week by having like a slight calorie reduction and even yesterday i couldn't eat all of the calories um which is fine as long as i don't do it every day and seeing that improvement in the lifting has just i'm not exaggerating when i say it's completely transformed my entire life i'm so much happier i'm so much happier i'm eating only whole food and the thing about it is that um, the whole food that I'm eating is stuff that I was afraid to eat eight weeks ago. Like I was putting my breakfast in this morning, right? So this morning for my breakfast, let me show you my macros. I tell you what, I'll take a screenshot of the macros so you can see what I've eaten this morning and I'll put it in here so you can see. So. I have eaten 41 grams of carbohydrate, 20 grams of fat, and 36 grams of protein. And even this morning, I was just walking around the kitchen saying, hmm, I think I'll have a bit of that, I think I'll have a bit of that. So I had two poached eggs, I had two baby bell cheese, um, I had a slice of sourdough toast with butter on it, I had 50 mils of coconut water, and let me tell you, being able to drink coconut water again, oh, I love coconut water so much. But what I'm finding is that even like 50 mils of coconut water, which is like, it's not that much. It's more than enough. And before it'd be like, I'd be chasing that satiety. And being, if, I, if you had said three months ago to me that I would be able to have a slice of toasted sourdough bread and not want to eat the rest of the loaf, I would have been like, you're crazy. I don't have that type of self-control. It's nothing to do with self-control. It's about fueling your body properly and nourishing your body properly. And once I got that right, I'm able to have things like sourdough bread without wanting to eat it all. I'm able to have um, honey without wanting to tip the entire jar into my mouth. I'm able to have like a, a, a little bit of chocolate and not want to eat the rest of the bar. And that used to be something that even when I was doing carnivore, I still had the 90% chocolate because the carb cravings were so bad at one stage that I knew that if I gave up eating the chocolate and just went like pure carnivore, that yeah, the, the cravings would go away completely. But it was psychologically a really hard step to take. And here's the thing that, um, surprised me most about it is that it didn't awaken that carb dragon it didn't awaken the beast and for me that has been like the most epic part of this transformation and 
I'm just so happy. <laughs> like, I'm so happy. Like, I've been chasing weight loss for six years. And to go through a process of rehabilitation, healing and re recovery, metabolic recovery, um, when I first started digging into it, you know, all of the, all of the, the resources that I found all said, yeah, you're probably going to gain a little bit of weight. It's probably going to be a few pounds. Like if you gain 10 pounds, like you're, you're going too fast, right? You shouldn't gain massive amounts of weight. I increased my calories from 1100 to 1800 over eight weeks. I went from less than 20 grams of carbs a day to 100 to 120 over eight weeks. I increased incrementally, slowly. And in protein priority diet, there's a roadmap for it, right? There's, there's a metabolic recovery plan that shows you exactly step-by-step step what to do to recover. Um, and you can get, I have a free guide. I have a free seven-step meta, metabolism recovery guide that's available on my website. I'll leave a link down below. You can go, just go and download it and start your metabolic recovery. But you might, you are more than likely, especially if you've been like chronically calorie deficit, um, you've been um, doing that for a long time, you're probably going to gain a bit of weight. But I promise you, you are going to feel so incredibly transformed by this. You're not really going to care because it's only going to be a few pounds and it's going to make you happier. It's going to make you more fulfilled. It's going to give you breathing space. You're not going to obsess about food anymore. You're not going to obsess about carbs anymore. You're not going to be thinking macros, blah, 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 blah. And one of the things that was, is a real pinch for a lot of people when I talk about this, I'm, I'm especially like when you come into the protein priority diet, I, you got to track. You have to track. There's no getting away from it. If you're like, I know tracking isn't for me, protein priority diet is not for you because in my experience, my own personal experience in my private practice and in the protein priority diet, if you don't track, you're going to either under eat or you're going to over eat. And both are going to cause weight gain. Yes, under eating causes weight gain, over eating causes weight gain. You need to learn how many calories a day your body needs to maintain your weight. That is the key to long-term weight loss, is learning how to maintain your weight. Now, there's a roadmap in, in the protein priority diet, how to do it, right? We, it's the first thing that we learn. How many calories a day does my body need? The science and like all of those calculators say that I need about 2,200 calories a day. I'm not there at 2,200 calories a day because six years of keto destroyed my lean muscle. Like I literally broke down my own tissues to make glucose. And the tissues that were lost were lean muscle mass. Now you might've seen, so a lot of ketos, ketors out there went and had DEXA scans and saw that they lost lean muscle and gained fat, but stayed the same way. Um, and that's why, because you literally catabolize, you break down your muscles to, to feed your body the glucose it needs for gluconeogenesis and sustained ketosis. So if I had not broken down all that lean muscle mass, then I could probably eat 2,200 calories a day. My goal is to get to 2,200 calories a day. I'm not there yet, I'm at 18. 1,800 calories is where I need to stay to maintain my weight. That gives me a stable weight. Up and down a pound or two, fluctuates during the month. That's completely normal. That's what bodies do, they fluctuate. But my weight has been stable. In the first few weeks, it, it it's kind of like, it's been like a slow, um, so like it's not that like I put on those um, pounds overnight. It's been a slow, um, a slow process where I went up a pound and it was like, okay, so, I'm up a pound and then I go went up another pound. It was like, okay, so I've increased my carbs too much, I've increased my calories too much, bring it back down again. And the thing is you won't lose that weight immediately, right? They're, they're on for the moment, right? So that two pounds was on, right? So um, it was like, okay, so let's try increasing a little bit again. Okay, too far again, that's another two pounds. Okay, bring it back down again. And over the eight weeks, I gradually increased. Sometimes I went too quickly like going from like 80 grams of carbs to 120 over an, over a few days, I put on a couple of pounds. Perfectly normal, that's what happens, it's healing weight. So I brought it back down again. Weight didn't go down, it's not going to go down from the majority of us, It that's there to stay for the moment. 
and I continued increasing slowly my weight didn't go up anymore and that's when I knew these are the amount of carbs a day I need the amount of fat the amount of protein the amount of calories I now know that at around 1800 calories maximum of 120 grams of carbs a day 120 grams of protein and the rest from fat that's my Goldilocks zone me personally um, now I know that with a couple of hundred calorie reduction that's all you need couple of hundred calorie reduction plus weight training three days a week that's how I'm gonna lose weight increasing my calories and weight training three days a week that's how I'm gonna maintain my weight and that's it I don't have to do anything else but I have to track because if I don't track and I tried it a few days I, I every single week for the last eight weeks I have had a day where I did not track my eating until the end of the day and I go at the end of the day filled in what I've eaten and I'm back at 1200 calories. It's like, wow, like it's just absolutely instinctual at this point to eat less. So I'm actually having to make an effort to eat more. Uh, so I have to track every day. If you don't track, you're lying to yourself. If you don't track, you're trying to avoid the truth of what's in front of you and you're gonna either under eat or you're going to overeat and if you under eat it's going to make you overeat <laughs> and if you overeat you're going to gain weight if you under eat you're going to gain weight because you're going to overeat to compensate and it's just one big vicious toxic cycle um and i feel like i've stepped out of it i feel like i've finally stepped and this makes me really emotional because i was so i was so deep into it i was so wrapped up in the weight loss I was so wrapped up in why it wasn't working and that's why people say that I'm I'm a, a chronic what is it they call me like a yo-yo dieter I'm not a yo-yo dieter my weight hasn't been going up hundreds of pounds up and down I was just trying to find what worked so I was only trying to find what worked for me um and instead of focusing on all of those health markers I focused on the weight instead and what happened yeah no matter what I did I gained weight <laughs> no matter what I did I'm confident I'm a hundred percent confident that um, this weight loss will continue but I have to track every day I have to do three to four days of weight lifting every week and I have to do at least 8,000 steps a day but that's it and if I feel this good doing that no problem here <laughs> absolutely no problem here so if you want to get started on your own metabolic recovery um and you are ready to throw out that toxic diet and weight loss culture and get get out of the cycle of restriction and overeating and obsessing about food and being afraid to eat carbs then you can go to my website and grab the free seven step metabolism recovery guide and i'll leave a link down in the description below so you join me here next Wednesday, actually every Wednesday, I'm going to be doing a series called Weight Loss Wednesday where you submit your questions and I answer them live on YouTube. I was doing it over in my Facebook group, but you know what? The majority of people that came to me were like, uh, I don't have Facebook, I don't want Facebook. Is there any chance you can do them on YouTube instead? So I figure I'll bring it back to YouTube because that's where the majority of you guys have either found me or, or watch my content. Um, and I definitely think I'm gonna be moving away from Facebook. I, the only reason that I'm gonna keep Facebook is for some of the groups that I'm in and the Protein Priority Diet um, members community is there too. Um, so it will be here on Wednesday. So just make sure that you're subscribed and make sure that you click the little bell because when you click the little bell, it gives you a notification when I go live. So if you forget about it, because you know, life is busy. If you forget about it, then it will give you alert, an alert to say, hey, Christina's live and you can come and watch. And it's at 4 p.m. Geneva time. So it's not, it's kind of, is the best I could do to try and get everybody. I know you guys in Australia and New Zealand, it's a bit late for you. Um, and, um, in the USA it's kind of early morning so it's the best I could do to balance everything out but anyway um if you're interested in more about the metabolism let me know um down in the description if you want like a more detailed process of what I'm doing you've seen what I've eaten I've talked you through the process if you want me to 
track kind of fitness goals and stuff like that because I'm trying everything I can to avoid going to the gym. So I bought myself a pair of roller skates, I bought myself a pair of roller blades. Um, and I have reached out to a guy who's based in Lausanne um, and I've asked him, he does, roller, he does rollerblading lessons. So I've asked him if he comes to Geneva at all to do lessons and he messaged me and he said, yeah, here's my phone number, let's talk. So I'm like, boom, I get some rollerblade lessons. Um, I just wanna have fun. I am ready to forget about pounding away in the gym. I just wanna do something that's fun, that I enjoy and use up all of this energy that I have because I'm sleeping like a baby. <laughs> I feel good all the time. My digestion is perfect again. Um, and I just feel amazing. And I really want to bring you along with that. If you want to see kind of like vlogs as well, because I know a lot of you really liked the kind of vlog stuff that I do. Just let me know in the comments what you want to see. If you want to see that kind of stuff, you want to see what we eat, where we go, you just let me know because I'm here to create content for you. Um, this is our community and um, I want to be able to help as much as I can. So I want to thank every single one of you who have been supportive, who have sent me messages or emailed me or DM'd me. Um, and you have been such great support, a great encouragement in the face of all of the hate that I got and all of the people who were um, questioning my <laughs> my intelligence, questioning my qualifications, questioning my... Um, <laughs> somebody actually said that I was clearly getting paid by <laughs> pharmaceutical companies or something like that. I was being paid by somebody to say this stuff and it's like... <laughs> So questioning my integrity as well. Um, but thank you to all for those of you who have who supported me. Like, I know that you see a lot on YouTube where it's like, I love you guys so much. I love my community, but I, I really do. I really do. I feel like this big sense of camaraderie because so many of you are in the exact same position as me, just fighting for our health and fighting against all of the mixed messages and all of the mixed advice and the, conf <laughs> the absolute conflicting advice that we get about things. Um, so I'm going to do my best to bring you the most accurate information I can based on what I know. And I will always say, if I'm wrong about something, I will always say, and I will always say, hey, um, you know, be discerning, listen to your body and go with what makes you feel good. So thanks again for being here and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.